So welcome to another video of Ground Zero. In this video, as you can see the title, we are going to talk about the stopping side distance, a very important phenomena which is being required by the vehicles to travel on the road that to safely by avoiding any kind of collision. So in stopping side distance, there are two things which basically we consider. One is the sight and other is the distance. So sight, as you all know, is basically how far you can see, right? And sight distance basically means, stopping sight distance basically means will be that how far you should be able to see in, uh, you can say, in respect to that you should be able to apply the brake in the meantime without colliding to any vehicle. So in this video, let's try to dig inside the entire topic of stopping side distance and let's try to understand that how we can find out the magnitude of stopping side distance. So now with this uh, small diagram, let's try to understand that why stopping side distance is a must when we are traveling on a road. So let's say this is the condition and where we can see a, uh, a society basically, a plan view of a society. And here, let's say there's a white car which is moving and there is a red car which is parked. So now the case is, let's say the distance between these two cars right now is 100 meter. And if right now the white car applies the brake, it will require, let's say, 50 meters to stop. So we can say that if right now the white vehicle will apply the brake, it will take only 50 meters to stop itself. And we can say we can avoid the accident. But the question is why the white vehicle will apply the brake when it has no idea about the red vehicle standing around the corner. So when this white vehicle will be able to see the red vehicle. So now let's say that the white vehicle reaches to this position and now white vehicle will notice the red vehicle. The problem here is right now the distance between these two cars is way less than 50 meters and now there is nothing which can stop the collision between these two cars. So that is the reason why we should have a sufficient distance vision for the driver so that driver can see the object and then accordingly deal with the condition and then apply the brake to avoid any kind of uh, any kind of collision so now let's try to understand it even more clearly or you can say step by step that what actually happens in the mind of the driver when something comes in front of him or her so let's say we are having this vehicle and this vehicle as soon as it reaches this point the driver notices there is some obstruction on the road in our case we can say there is a cow standing on the way which is very common in uh, india you must have also seen this a lot of times in your uh, real experience. Now, this is the exact moment when the vehicle, when the driver actually have seen the object for the first time. Now, as soon as the vehicle will see the object, now the driver, what it will do? The driver will cover a certain distance. And what the driver is doing in covering during the uh, during this distance, the driver is deciding whether to apply the brake or not. The driver is reacting. So the distance covered by the driver while he or she is reacting, while he or she is making a decision, should I apply the brake, that distance is called as lag distance. And now let's suppose exactly at this position where the vehicle is right now, the vehicle applies the brake. The vehicle will not stop exactly at the position where it will apply brake. You know this very practically. It will cover certain distance before it comes to rest even after applying the brake. And the distance the vehicle has covered after application of brake is called as the braking distance. Now, let's understand that what happens 
during that distance when the driver is reacting so the first thing that happens is the vehicle the driver actually sees the object and have a perception in his or her brain inside the brain intellection take place where the perception where the drawing where the image sent by the eyes to the brain are analyzed to see that what type of object it is and once the brain is ready with the output and brain is ready with the information that what type of object you are having in front of you, then you get emotions around it. Once you get the emotion, you make the decision. Yes, I'm going to apply the brake. Then you carry out the volition. Your brain carry out the volition. In volition, the brain gives the signal to the foot to apply the brake. So the entire process of PIEV, perception, intellection, emotion, volition takes around 2.5 seconds as per Indian Road Congress. So if any time reaction time is not given, you should take it as 2.5 seconds. So stopping side distance is basically summation of lag distance plus braking distance where lag distance is nothing. It is a distance which is being covered by the driver during the reaction time. So let's say the velocity of the driver was V and the time the driver took was TR. So obviously the distance covered in TR time will be V into TR where velocity is in meter per second and TR is the reaction time in seconds. So this was about the lag distance. Now let's try to understand what happens when the driver has applied the brake just after he or she has made the decision. Now after application of brake what happens? Eventually, the vehicle will come at rest. Eventually, the velocity of the vehicle will become zero. So here, we'll be using a very simple uh, equation basically where we will see the change in energy will be equals to the work done that has happened. And through that, as you know, what is the change in energy? Initially, the energy was half mv square. Finally, it is zero because the vehicle is at rest. And work done is going to be how much work done is going to be your displacement into the force. Force will be which one? Force will be the frictional force, which will be force of friction, the coefficient of friction into the normal reaction, which is the weight of the vehicle in our case into the displacement, which is the braking distance in our case. And from there, we get the relationship of braking distance as V square by 2GF. Velocity is in meter per second, G is in meter per second squared and F is coefficient of longitudinal friction whose values varies from 0.35 to 0.4 depending upon the speed of the vehicle. So finally, this is the formula of stopping side distance that we get which is the lag distance plus brake distance where brake distance is V square by 2GF and lag distance is V into TR. So this is the stopping side distance magnitude. And there is one more case. Suppose you are having a gradient on the road. In that case, nothing will change in the break, in the lag distance. Only there will be a change in brake distance. And that distance, that change is very simple. And that change will come in the denominator as plus or minus 10 theta. Plus when the vehicle is going up gradient. Minus when the vehicle is going down the gradient. So this is basically the modified or you can say with gradient value of the stopping side distance. So this was the stopping side distance for you all. And uh, this is very important for any examination. If you're preparing for gate, ESC, state exam or any examination for such videos, keep uh, subscribe to this channel and share this video and hit the like button so that all the other students can watch these type of informational videos. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Joshit Singh. I'll see you in the next session.